Oswald Chambers once said that faith for my deliverance is not faith in God. Faith means whether I am visibly delivered or not, I will stick to my belief that God is love. Amen. Welcome to Hope Channel Uganda and this is Hope Sabbath School, your weekly broadcast of uh, our in-depth lesson or Bible studies. We want to welcome you once again to Hope Channel Uganda and we thank you for joining us for this program as well as for our other various programs. Uh, joining me once again for our discussion today, uh, my comrades with whom we've been singing the songs in Psalms and uh, I'm going to request them to welcome you, our viewer. I'm Charles Kabwa um, from Bunga East, Resource, Bunga East Resource Central Church and um, I'm also from Star Gold Foods which produces soya products for schools and all those schools which are buying from Star Gold Foods I'll get you all. Amen. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Kawali Sawin is my name from Bunga Central. Happy Sabbath. Mm. Nice to have you, Winnie. Thank you. My name is Martin Nsimbi. I'm privileged to be here before you, and I hope you're going to enjoy the show. I know January is a bit of a tough month, but still always tune in and be blessed. Amen. Thank you so much, Martin. Um, uh, since you are our chorister here, I'm going to request you to lead us in prayer as we start our oh. discussion today. Oh, I heard my song. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly loving Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Father, in all that we're going to do today, we pray that you lead us, Lord, as we're going to discuss. Give us wisdom to remember that which you have been studying, Lord. And let us uh, internalize everything that we're going to read. Let our dear viewer be blessed. Uh, inspire the, the, the viewer with, by, your Holy, by your Holy Spirit. And inspire us all in a, in a similar way, Lord Father, that we may all be blessed. Consecrate us unto your service and unto your worship. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Martin. As uh, you prepare to, uh, to get your lesson, we continue our study in the book of Psalms. So far, we've gone uh, up to the fourth uh, lesson study, and we believe that there are quite a number of things that we've all learned so far. Uh, however, before we proceed into our discussion for today, it's also very important for you to uh, note that uh, this mission still requires your support. Mm -hmm. And the best way you can support this mission is through putting that money into your envelope Amen. and writing it on that Hope Channel section. As you know, this is a young mission and your support is very, very important. Mm -hmm. It does a lot in boosting this mission as well as supporting it. And if at all you're not able to, uh, to use your envelope, you can still use your mobile phone. You can still dial our Airtel Merchant Code 436-0514. 436-0514. 0514 mm. and you put in that money it will come direct to us we shall receive it with gratitude and you'll be supporting this mission of hope channel uganda mm. as we continue sharing hope for eternity uh, in a special way i also want to request you to mark april 14th 2024 something big is coming and i wouldn't love you to miss out on this april 14th 2024. Mark that date on your calendar. In our subsequent programs, we shall be letting you know what is coming up because it is very beneficial to you as well as to me. Um, in a way of, uh, of uh, participating in our Impact Evangelism 2024, Hope Channel Uganda has already started on its gospel rally that uh, started airing on uh, uh, Jan 20th, and it will be ending on uh, Feb 3rd uh, with uh, Pastor Godfrey Kolumba. Uh, please don't miss out on this gospel rally as it goes on, and more so it is supported by our very own institution, Katkamo SDA Secondary School. So uh, Jan 20th to Feb 3rd, it has been going on, and it is still going on. Be part of this gospel rally. And also in a special way, 
as we continue to thank God for his goodness to us, especially in the music industry, the Gabriel Ministries is celebrating 10 years of music. Wagoza, Wagoza. Yeah. Be a part of Wagoza, Wagoza. I, 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 I want you to Kuwagoza with me, <laughs> if Man. that is an English word. <laughs> I want you to Wagoza with me. So the Gabriel Ministries is organizing its uh, 10th year anniversary at uh, uh, Theatre La Bonita. And uh, you're encouraged to be part of it. And uh, uh, this will take place on May 12th. So organize accordingly. Be with us as we celebrate in music and thanksgiving uh, for what the Lord has done for us. In a special way, once again, I want to welcome you to our weekly break cast of Hope Sabbath School. I know it has been a wonderful week for many of us and for those of you who have had some challenges, the fact still remains the Lord hears and delivers. Amen. And our discussion today is just going to give you an assurance that we have a loving God who cares that much about us and every time you call upon him he is readily waiting and he is going to hear your prayer and he will deliver you. It's important for you to remember that the Lord who created and sustains everything mm. is the sovereign king over the whole world. Mm. Amen. And he rules the world with justice and righteousness. Mm. His laws and statutes are good and bring life to those who keep them. Mm. Yes. The Lord is a just judge who ensures that the world remains well ordered and does so by rewarding the righteous and punishing the wicked but in his time, not ours. Mm -hmm. You've cried for a very long time. And you're always asking yourself a question. Has the Lord forgotten me? Does the Lord still care about me? I want to assure you in today's discussion that the Lord hears and delivers. Um, Council Winnie, as we uh, enter into this discussion, I want to take us, you to, I request you to take us through a brief summary of that introduction section. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to take you through the brief introduction of, of this, maybe the lesson. When you look at the theme, the Lord hears and delivers, when we break it down to the Lord hears, it means... Maybe there is a cry, there are questions, or someone is saying something for you to hear. And it's part of listening. Mm. So it depends on what you actually want the other person to listen to or to hear. Mm. And then delivering, it means maybe you've been in bondage, maybe you're struggling somewhere, but then something good happens and you're out of that. You're delivered. Let me talk about maybe the people that are in prison, what, what, and they go all through that. The judgment is made and they are set free. They are acquitted. That means you've been delivered from your bondage. So here we are going to look at God hearing us when we cry, when we are asking, when we are troubled. His ear is there to listen to us. And he will deliver us from what? From sin. Mm. Yes. Um, Martin. Yes, sir. We understand that the Lord is always near. Yes. Is it um, good news or bad news uh, to have a Lord who draws near to us each and every time? You know, um, as, as we saw, as we've been studying, the God who created heaven and earth is the same God who, does, who sustains us. Yes. Yeah? And he's the same God inviting us. You know, uh, we, we look at, let me say, kings, presidents, yeah? you know, imagine the president knows you. You know, that's a, a, a privilege, you know. To many people, so, it's a, a big privilege if the president knows you. But just imagine now, if the president not only knows you, but is calling you to come and have a relationship with him, a friendship with him. Isn't that even a greater privilege? Now, the creator of heaven and earth is mm. doing the same thing. And he, is, he knows us. He knows our every bit of uh, within us because he is near us. He's mm. a personal God. 
I usually joke around with my friends and I tell them, I tell them you know, God is such a, an amazing God. Not joke, but it's a reality. God is such an amazing God. He can give you, one day you'll have billions and billions and billions of shillings. Then one day he'll say, 500 shillings are enough for you today. And as in, he, he, can, he can decide to count to the very dot because he's your personal God. He knows you personally. Um, I don't know any rich father who would be that, you know, that particular about you. He's a personal God. He's so near you. He's a personal God. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Psalms 34 verse 17 has these words. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears yeah. yeah. and delivers them out of all their troubles. Mm. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears mm. and delivers them out of all their troubles. Can I assume that the Lord, maybe two questions, uh, Charles, which I am going to ask. Mm -hmm. One is, who are the righteous? Mm -hmm. And the second one is, mm -hmm. if my prayers are not answered, mm -hmm. does it mean that I'm not righteous because the Lord is only listening to the righteous mm -hmm. and they are the only ones he can deliver? The Lord can deliver anyone. I think the, the reason as to why the writer is pointing out the righteous is there can be so many people in the village, okay? But those who are, who are moving by your rules, you sit in your own village, I guess will have um, a more inclined advantage mm. when you are giving out something. It's not that when you have bread at your home that you won't feed the rest of the village. You will. But um, <clears throat> those who are righteous mean that they fully depend on you. Now, if there are two people, one who is fully dependent on you and one who is dependent on, on themselves, mm. both of them, I, I, I can give bread, but my ear or my eye will have an inclination on this one who is fully dependent mm -hmm. on me. Why? Because by the, by the moment someone is righteous, it's not that, that they've worked their own righteousness. No. It's because they've depended on me, the father, who, who makes them righteous through my son, that I can be able uh, 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 to, to, to call them righteous. righteous. Now, this means that because the Bible says that he, he gives rain to both the righteous and the non-righteous. It means that he listens to both of them. But when the, 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 the Bible is preaching that he blesses the righteous, then it, it means those who are in Christ, because when you're righteous, it, it means you're, you're, you're in Christ. Now, those who come before him and they are in the image of his son, they stand a higher chance. So that means that it is very, very important to have faith in the Son. Thank you. That is how we claim the righteousness. Oh, yes. Yes, counsel. Thank you. When I was reading this, I remembered something. When I was still at campus, you know, like you have friends and all that. So some of us used to call our parents direct. I want this, I want this. From the least thing that you actually expect to provide for yourself, you call. Daddy, mommy, I want this. But some people were like, at this age, you're even asking your parents for this. That means whatever my parent is doing, they are looking at me. They are the ones to provide. So that is what Charles is talking about. God looks at the righteous first. Mm. So that is how it is. Mm. Um, the Lord is looking at the righteous and he is delivering them. Mm -hmm. Which implies that um, surely there are times when we want to help out people. Mm -hmm. There are times when we want to help out people. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the resources mm -hmm. or the means. Mm -hmm. There are times when people want to help us out but mm -hmm. they are not in position to. Oh, yes, too. But they would have loved to. Yes, true. And then comes in the fact that our frame is not hidden. 
from God. Mm. And that is what we saw in uh, Psalm 139, mm. uh, where he says, O oh Lord, you have searched me mm. and known me. me. What does God really know about us? Uh, he knows is, He knows your every, he has the perfect knowledge of everything concerning your life. Yeah? The, the lesson is shown he knows the he knows the inside, he knows the around, he knows mm -hmm. the up, he knows the down. He, I usually when I'm praying sometimes and I'm praising I God and I say, Lord Father, I'm not I know I'm not even able to know my future. I know you thoroughly, but you, you even know my past better than I do. My past which I am a witness of. He knows it better than me. Do you know that my son knows the number of hair he has on his head? <laughs> He's well, super no. clever then. He <laughs> does it. No, he does it. He does you it. should he have asked me how many they are. How many are there? One. One. <laughs> That's a baby, maybe. <laughs> That's a baby. Yeah. Yeah. But God knows every single bit, every single detail of you, inside you. Mm -hmm. And even the things you know about yourself, He knows better than, than you. And he knows your future. He knows every single bit of you. Mm. Yeah, that's why we, you know, God, God, he, he, me, he knows us and he means to help us with ourselves. We are not even able to help ourselves because we don't know ourselves. We don't know, you don't know yourself better than God knows you. Mm. Yeah. Verse 13 says, Yes. For you formed my inward parts. Mm -hmm. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I pr for verse 14, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully Amen. made. Amen. Now, such a God, who even knew when Charles was knitted, how the meiosis went about when I was in the womb, how the, this womb developed into this Katayini Charles, and this Katayini Charles began from one month, two months, three months, four months, nine months. Charles came into the world. Now, this, this God of mine knows what tomorrow will be, Thursday. Mm -hmm. He knows where I will be, mm -hmm. what I will do, and what I might not be able to do, depending on how I choose to do. But he knows each and everything about me. Now, is this something to be afraid of or something to celebrate? I think... It depends on how you perceive your God. Your God, exactly. exactly. Because, do I fear my God? If, if I am fearing my God, as, as in the word fear, then that means that there's something I am doing which makes me fear God, mm -hmm. to know me in and out. Mm -hmm. But if my heart <coughs> is yearning out to be led by the one who knows me so much, then this comes as a celebration that let me hold on to this person who knows even when I was born, how I was born, um, who, who knitted me. And I, I, I don't think this person who knitted me in my mother's womb can let anything drastic or anything so bad happen to his creation, mm. which he knows so well from when it it. From the point of inception to, to the day I am holding right now. Which means that uh, because he knows everything about me, mm. there is that intimacy mm -hmm. that I have with him. Mm. But uh, in spite of that intimacy, are there times when I can, uh, where can, I can be out of God's reach? Hmm. Yes. Mm, no. I don't no, think so. There's no moment. There's no moment. Uh, this psalm Sam says, Yes. Even darkness is light to you. Yes. This means that, because he also says that even when I hide under the graph, um, <clears throat> uh, when I was being made in, in fact, woven in the depths of the earth, mm. Mm, verse 16, uh, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your books were written every one of them the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. 
Could I say something? Oh yeah, yes. Um, do you know how the Bible gets someone's genealogy? Look at Matthew 1. Huh? Or other places, many places that the Bible gets genealogy. Do you know, mm. in other words, uh, if, if you think about it, in another way, God is actually showing how he planned, if it's Charles, he talks of his, his great, 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 great grandfather. But when God comes from the great, great, great grandfather, he's planning how he's going to make Charles. Charles. Mm. How, what, what attributes are going to come from this one, what attributes are going to, then the woman that the mother is going to, as in, eh, he mm. brings everything together <laughs> in order to make Charles from your great, 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 great mm. who is Adam. So it's amazing. He's, an, um, he's a God that is beyond us. The Bible says, Isaiah, Isaiah 55, I think, that my thoughts are, you know, greater than your thoughts, as high up as the heavens are from the earth is how much higher my thoughts are from you. Who has ever measured the heavens from the earth? Who no knows one. the distance? No you can't say God is 55 times wiser than me or a billion times. He's infinitely wiser than us. Mm. Yeah. So in other words, God has perfect knowledge about mm -hmm. us, about Thank us. You. as well as our circumstances. Thank you. And he always, he's always reaching out to help us under all those circumstances. Mm. But the intimacy that he has with us should not actually drive us away from him no. but it should enable us to with open arms reach out and embrace christ for what he has done for us on the cross, on the cross mm. by faith mm. uh, but uh, in spite of that intimacy in spite mm. of the fact that um, god knows about me mm. when i look at the surroundings when i look at the atrocities that are happening mm. around the world when mm. i look at the difficulties that i go through mm. on a daily basis mm. to get bread on the table mm -hmm. what assurance do i have as a christian what assurance do i have as a believer that actually god cares for me winnie thank you actually there are many reasons actually to know that god cares just like from what they were saying god has plans for you and no one has plans for you when they don't care for you mm. It's impossible. Mm. And how does care come in? From love. You can't care for what you don't love. So because God loves us, and we are assured that he will care, care for us. So when you look at how he planned, let me talk about Abraham's story with Sarah. They were promised a son, Isaac. But because God's promises stand, and he had everything to make sure that this son is born. Mm. That means it was in his plan. At some point, I believe that Ismail was not supposed to be born. <laughs> but whatever happens, it is also in God's plan. Mm. Because mm. that is how actually Haggai was in place for Ismail to also be there. Yeah. That means that God knew that this actually would happen. Abraham and Sarah would make, would make that mistake. God knows. Mm. So there is nothing for us to actually fear. All yes. our trust should be in him. Honestly, Winnie, um, yes, Psalms 40, 1 to 3 has mm. these words. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me mm -hmm. and heard my cry. Mm. He, also, he also brought me up out of a horrible, horrible pit, mm. out of the muddy clay, mm. and set my feet upon the rock and established my steps. Mm. He has put a new song in my mouth. Mm. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Mm. Um, you've talked about Sarah and Abraham. The promise is made to them. They waited. And after some time, the promise was fulfilled for them. But here comes me. Okay? I've really prayed for the same. I've really waited. I've done anything that is possibly humanly possible. Mm. And I still believe it has not come. Mm. Until the time when I enter the grave, it mm. has not come. Mm. Surely what... Where is that assurance th that he really cares, that he has not forgotten about me, that he, my deliverance is going to come? 
Um, yes. If I could say, first of all, when God promises, yeah, you talked of, of Abraham, yeah, the Bible actually shows you that, that, that Abraham actually killed his son, yeah? But um, God had promised. And you know, you, know, you know, I like that we should mention Abraham. Abraham knew that when he, when he was going to kill his, by his son, and with evidence in the Bible, when he was going to kill him in Hebrews 11, when he was killing his son, he knew that God had promised, God has promised me this son, that this son is going to be a great nation. Now I'm going to kill him. So God, I'm going to kill him, but God is going to resurrect him. You understand? Mm. Our assurance that, we, that God is our protector should be unquestionable, even to the point of death. Because mm. Abraham was like, okay, I'm going to kill my child, but I'm sure that God is going to do what? Resurrect him. Because God has to keep his, his, promise. his promise. So once God promises his children, mm. know 100% that he's going to keep his promise. Mm. And without any variance, without any, because he is God, he's the one who creates, he's the one who runs the environment around us. Mm. So that's our assurance that... The, yes, th thank you, Martin. Um, uh, sorry for cutting you short. There, there are certain things that these psalmists actually talk about, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, mm. when it comes to the assurance mm. that God's care is always abounding. Mm. And I believe that my viewer out there, or our viewer out there, would actually want to be pointed out to these things. What are these particular things that give me the assurance mm. that God's care is always abounding? Yes, uh, Winnie. Actually, when I was reading Psalms 40, I remember this song we always sing, He Brought Me Out of the Mary Clay. When you read the lyrics of that song, it gives you how God cares. There is also this, the Psalms 55, mm. talks about casting your burdens. There is also that song, cast your burdens unto Jesus because he cares for you. That is enough. You know, for us humans, the way we look at care, is maybe when I'm, when I'm lacking shelter, I want that big house mm -hmm. that I dream of. I want that fancy car that I want. You get. But if at all you can actually move from one place to another, that is enough care. If you can't sleep in the night, that is enough care. That's all. Mm. But when you look at those big things, you will think that God doesn't care. Mm. Yes, Charles. Now, thank you, Awin. You posed a very a very intriguing question for someone who has waited for so long for someone who is having a challenge and it is nimbling and nimbling at them this guy, this guy has a disease it is eating at him day and night he has used each and every possible medis, medical application and he is not getting sure now my own response to that question is whatever you're going through, mm. your first responsibility is first and foremost cast it unto him first. Then, number two, the way he responds is out of your hands. Why, why do we pray? We pray because we intend to, to give up our will the Father's will. Mm. It's part of the prayer. When you open your heart in faith, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you let you let um, the Father's will become your will. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Charles. Um, to our viewer out there, it is very, very important to know that we have a living God who acts on those who call upon him. Mm. And this living God is always the one who goes before you. Mm -hmm. Before you actually move out, this He's living God there. is there. He's already there. As you move, he is with you. Mm. There are no circumstances in life that can escape God's sovereign dominion. That is what yes. we saw when we were looking at God reigning. God reigning. Mm. All the circumstances, he's under all is 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 the master mm. of all these circumstances that we might face mm. and the fact still remains that is what we saw in psalms 121 verse 3 mm. where he says that he will not allow your foot to be, be moved. moved yeah okay mm. 
Here he is talking about the journey, mm -hmm. which means that along your journey, he's the one that is going to guide, guide, guide you in the journey. Yes. We have a wonderful God who does not slumber. Mm -hmm. He Never. does not sleep. He doesn't. Even when we are asleep, mm -hmm. we have a God who is mm -hmm. always with us. He does not sleep. That is a highlight. Mm. Th this shows us that our God is always alert mm -hmm. and is always ready to act on our behalf. Mm, right we have a lo the Lord who gives us a share. shade. shade. Uh, the life of the psalmist, when I was reading, I realized that these are people who used to move in, in the desert. True. And when he talks about a shed, mm. it really means a lot. After having moved for hours in that blistering sunshine, mm. Okay, here a person when it when it's uh, just twenty eight degrees, we are like cursing. Mm. Oh my God, it has shone for a number of days. It's it's really so hot. But these are people who used to move for hours in the desert, in the sunshine. Mm. So and the Lord put a cloud over them. Mm. Even us, we have a Lord who is our shed. Mm. He's the one who provides for us that physical as well as spiritual, spiritual shelter. shelter. We have. I mean, so, sometimes uh, it's, it's really fun when I think about sitting at the right hand, right hand of the king. Mm. God allows us to sit at his right hand. He, he says that I, I will be thy right hand of righteousness. And why does he talk mm. about that right hand? What, what is so special about the right hand? Right hand Protection. for most people is, is the hand that does everything mm. meaningful. The, the, the authority, strength. yeah, the strength. Authority, yeah, the, authority. The, 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 the okay. hand of authority. Mm. Yes. I, I mean, it's, it's the hand of authority. Mm. So this shows us that God's nearness and favor is with us. The authority mm. is there with us. God's protection is always with us. Mm. Yes. So to our viewer out there, all these things give us assurance of God's care. Mm. You might have been going through a lot of hardships. You, have, you might have been going through a lot of challenges. But we have a wonderful God. Which wonderful God does not slumber. He does not sleep. Yes, uh, Martin. Um, just to also answer your question in a better way or to get the, the context of all these things. Um, God is an interesting God. He doesn't, he doesn't require you we are even going to see this more in the future, in the, later on in the, in the study. God does not require you to have faith yeah? if he has done nothing for you. Mm. Are, you. are you understanding? If he has done nothing for you, mm. he doesn't require you to have faith. If surely God has done nothing for you. Because all these things, being your shadow by, by day, I mean, your, your, yes, your shade by day, being the right hand of you, God must have done something in your life for you to look back and say, surely God has taken me through, mm. through this. And that is why the children of Israel are used as, a, as an example here. Why didn't, some, why didn't the majority of the children of Israel make it to the promised land? Simply because they refused to remember what God had done for them and they lost faith. So it's very important for us to look back at what God has done, for us to build our, mm. our faith. Mm. Yeah. Um, <coughs> as, as we proceed, um, Psalms uh, 17, mm. 7 to 9, mm. uh, Psalms 17, 7 to 9. Um, in life, we always encounter a number of challenges. And uh, when, we counter, uh, we, when we encounter these challenges, we need a place to run to. Mm. Yes. Refuge. We live in countries where there are a number of wars happening with our neighbors and people always flock into, take for example, Uganda, mm. districts of Uganda, to seek a refuge. And uh, when we read the Bible, it talks about the Lord being our refuge in times of adversity. What makes the Lord our refuge in this time of, of challenges? Um, when, when, let me give an analogy of a child. When a child, maybe as they're playing outside, he's hit by his or her colleague, the first thing she will do is to run to either to the mother or the father. That this is hurting. Mm. Oh, she has hurt me. Oh, he has hurt me. Oh, he has hit me. It means... 
one the child is running away from the adversary the first thing number two the child is reporting the pain he has gotten from the adversary number three this child is looking for protection from the adversary now when when you are a refugee hmm, you are running from a hot a frying pan mm. to somewhere where it, it, it's cool you're running out from most times it's a war and this refuge uh, 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 is like running from a very hot environment running to somewhere where it is more amiable mm. more ambient and uh, 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 more acceptable to live it creates an environment of us living in a world full of adversaries and b by the time um, David wrote this he was being fought left right and center because David was a man of war likewise the world butters us so much yeah. at our places in our clans in our families in our churches like we are buttered in all angles and where do we run to God the refuge and the, the when we read Psalms 17 uh, 7 to 9 Psalms 31 1 to 3 Psalms 91 2 to 7 the goal, uh, this psalm is, is calling out to the Lord for, for rescue but in as he's calling out for him to, to, to be rescued he has this th one thing called trust he knows that I trust the one with whom I'm calling for to rescue me or for refuge. And the writer says that trust is a deliberate choice to acknowledge God's rulership over one's life in all circumstances. This means that if trust does not work in adversity, then it will never it will not work anywhere, anywhere else. Mm. It means that as I'm running to to this Lord of mine who is sovereign over everything and he knows each and every circumstance which is around me, I am pu I'm putting all my trust in him to whom I'm running to. And this trust must be um, exhibited by us Christians each and every day, and it is a choice. Mm. Either to trust God or to trust our own hands to get out of this adversity. Thank you so much, uh, Charles. Uh, Winnie, do you have chicken at home? Yes, in the village, really. Okay, tell me about the chicken. Okay. When you look at them, they are being scared by yes, an eagle. but those yes, the birds. I don't know how kites. they call them. Mm. Yes, but for us actually at home, even you have those wild animals that I don't know whether they are wild, but they eat them. That is the adversary. Yes. Mm. So, when it actually comes, they will run immediately to their, to their mother, and they are put under. Yeah. The wings. Yes, under the wings, and they are protected. Mm. And the way you look at the mother acting. It's like it's also trying to scare away the enemy. Mm. So when you look at this, this is how someone who is seeking refuge looks like. That means maybe you've been haunted, you're scared, but you have that protective person or protective place where you feel calm. And that is how these chicks do. Mm. Yes. So the, the, the chicks run to the mother mm. seeking for protection. Yes. Mm. But realize that it's only in the current generation where we are not really assured of that protection. Mm. Because why do I bring out that? You'll find that you really am a staunch Adventist. And I come to church and, you know, worship and do everything. But at the end of the day when the lights are dark, I actually run to a certain hut mm. and express and pour out mm. my everything in that hut. Mm. Is that really trust? Is that really indicating that I still have belief in this fortress of God? No. 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 Yes, Matthew. Um, you see, that just goes back to what I was saying. You having a past, ex a past experience with God and a past experience that you respect. That's where the Christianity comes in, having faith. Yeah? Because the, the psalmist himself testifies that this is my Lord. He, when he says that I'm going through adversity, I'm going through problems, but he still acknowledges that God is his 
God. Mm. Now, that just that part where he's acknowledging that God is his God means he had a past what? Experience. Experience. Mm. And now this adversity that he's currently in, he looks at his past and he sees that, oh, since I went through my past, I will go through my my future. Yeah. Um, I just want to bring to our attention, you, you know when God, God, when, 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 the two, when God sends Moses to Israel, I mean to, to Egypt, to get the children of Israel, God is more calm with the children of Israel and he's harsh with, 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 with Pharaoh, isn't it? Yeah. Uh. Why was God calm at that time? Because he knew that these people are not even believing right now. But when he takes, when he does all these wonders, he does all those wonders through Moses, he takes them out of the land of Israel, he puts them through the Red Sea, that is when God became harsh with them, when they showed disbelief. But had they shown dis disbelief before? Yes, they showed it. But he wasn't harsh with them. But now, that is when he, you know, he gets annoyed with them. We as Christians need to trust in God because of how far he has brought us. As Ellen White says, we need not fear yeah, the future and what is going to happen, lest we do it. We for, I mean, unless we, we, uh, un unless we are willing to forget how far God has, has brought us. And thank you so much. Jesus himself assures uh, uh, us, those, he assured even the Jews then, in Matthew 23, 37, yeah. he says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, mm. the, the city that kills the prophets and exactly. with stones that, God's messengers, how often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her mm. wings, but you wouldn't let me. So mm. it is. Exactly. It, it has always been our hearts that have refused. That have refused God's protection. Mm. Exactly. But he has, his, his, his wings are always there for us to run and for him to protect us. Thank you. Thank you so much. So to our viewer out there, the best security that you can have is the security that you find in God. Why? Because Psalms 91 verse 2 says, He is my refuge and my fortress. Mm -hmm. My God, in him I will trust. I will trust. Mm -hmm. Continue trusting in that God. Yes, the adversaries are many. Mm -hmm. The adversities are many. The challenges are many. But keep on hanging onto, onto that rope. Mm -hmm. As I said previously, as I've said previously, tie a knot and keep on hanging in. Why? Because your only protection is in God. He is that hen who covers you under his wings mm. in the times of challenges. Mm. Thank you so much for staying tuned to Hope Channel Uganda. To support this mission, we encourage you to use the Hope Channel section on your envelope. Put in that money. It will come direct to us and continue to support this mission. You can as well use our Airtel Merchant Code 4360514. And don't forget, on April 14th, something big is coming in Uganda. Mark that date, wait, anticipate eagerly for that day. Don't forget to join the Gabriel Ministries as they celebrate 10 years on May 12th as well. Prepare accordingly. Let us rejoice with them for the wonders that God has done, especially in the revival of the music industry in Uganda. And also keep on staying tuned for our daily broadcasts of the Gospel Rally that is being led by Pastor Godfrey Kurumba. It's still going on up to Feb the 3rd. Um, lady and gentlemen, uh, Martin, you talked about the journey of the children of Israel, the Exodus. Yes. yes. And when you talked about the Exodus, we see a God who is uh, a defender and a deliverer. Mm -hmm. Our viewer out there would like to know, how does God really defend us and how does God really deliver us as per the words of the psalmist? Because when we look at Psalms 114, mm -hmm. he talks about deliverance. Mm -hmm. That, that, that uh, the deliverance from Egypt these people mm. saw it as uh, God's power to mm. save his people. Mm. Yeah. Can you kindly, um, uh, Martin, can you kindly elaborate on that. God being our defender as well as our deliverer? Um, uh, defender and deliverer. You know, uh, with the children of Israel, as they're being used as an example, there was, um, the, there was a pillar of fire 
I mean, sorry, uh, sorry, not a pillar of fire, a, a cloud, a cloud that was over them. Yes. Now comes the time when they're going. Th I, I like Paul's analogy when he's showing how they went through the 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 the, the, the Red Sea. Mm. He calls it a bap baptism. Yes. All, 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 all were baptized. All were baptized. Mm. Now let's think of it clearly. They sincerely were baptized because they went in the middle of God's protection. There was a pillar. I mean, a, a cloud above them, mm. and there was the Red Sea on the mm. side. So they went through a kind of like a tunnel, mm. makes you could call it. They went through like a, a tunnel in a way because <laughs> the, the cloud was over them mm. and the Red Sea was behind beside them. So they got baptized unto Moses. Mm. Now, um, mo, mo, le, le, Let me read it for our viewer mm. out there. Mm. First Corinthians chapter 10, mm. verse 1 to 4 says, four. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud. Yes. All passed through the sea. Mm -hmm. All were baptized into Moses mm. in the cloud and in the sea. Mm -hmm. All ate the same spiritual food mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all drank the same spiritual drink. Mm. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Was Christ. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And now that's Paul. Paul going old school. He's going back to the to the to the to the to, to the previous days. Then the in, psalmist. In, in those words, is Paul actually pointing to something? Yes, okay. salvation. Okay. Itself and God's protection and his his bab and baptism itself going into another life altogether. That's that's what this that's what Paul is trying to show, going into another life. But God's protection also, jealous protection over his people. his people. And uh, the psalmist talks of how how the, 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 the mountains fled. He's just using poetry, mm. you know, poetic language kind of, yeah? Uh, symbolism that the, the, the mountains fled, the, the Red Sea, you know, split and, you know, was running away from them in a way because they had God's hand. Mm. Um, God protects us in a jealous way and he, he dismisses anything that comes in, our, in his way because he is God anyway. I, and that just makes me wonder, why do we, including myself, why do we sometimes opt for the way that we know is not God's way. Yet he is the one who's going to clear the way. It's uh, just, it's sin is something really bad. I want to give you an example. Oh, I, I live in a place where I are nearby the, there is a bush. Mm. Mm. But God is really funny. Mm -hmm. There are times when you actually move out of the house, the mind tells you that go back outside and flash a light. And ultimately, when you go back outside and flash a light, there is a snake creeping mm. by. Mm. Yeah. That is True. God who is a defender. Mm -hmm. The yes. child does not go out because mm. the child does not have that strength to fight mm. this snake. Mm. But God puts in place a person who he is in position mm -hmm. to fight it. To fight it. And warns him. Uh, and, and actually warns you mm. to take a second or a closer look. Look. And ultimately, you see it there. Mm. And you're able to do what? To, to do destroy it. Exactly. Mm. The, these children of Israel in this journey, mm. in this exodus, mm. we see them seeing the power of God. Mm. Mm. Yes. He's the one who moves the mountain. Mm. Yes. He's the one who parts the Red Sea. Even exactly. when the adversary is close behind on, the, on his chariots and yes. wheels, mm. this God is there. Mm. Uh, I actually loved... Um, uh, 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 the, the words that the author put in this translation mm. that in fact many of God's children in all times and in all places the way to the heavenly Jerusalem is fraught with danger mm. that even us we as Christians our journey has dangers so much. thank you so there are so so many mm. but we have assurance to look beyond the hills and, and toward the, the creator, creator of heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth. Amen. Why? Because the creator of heaven and earth, as we've seen previously, mm. okay, he is our defender. Mm. He is our deliverer. Mm. And with God on our side, mm. surely we don't have anything mm. to fear. Yeah. That leads me to another thing as you come in, uh, Charles. Mm. Um, when we read Psalm 3, mm. the third Psalm, verse 4, mm. uh, we are now going to see a sanctuary, mm. our help coming in from the sanctuary. Mm. Does this imply that my help can only come from the church? 
Because in a layman's understanding, when I look at the sanctuary, mm. Mm. I see it as a church, that okay. I only have to run to the church. That is mm. where I say, oh, in times of war, in most cases, actually, yeah, actually mm. yeah. people run to mm. the church. Genocides yes, and whatever, people run to the church. Run to, yeah, the, church. Run to mm. the church. I, yes. Is it that the church is the place where we can get the, the help? help? Is that the sanctuary that is being talked about by a psalmist? The no. presence of God. The sanctuary oh, is, is not the building. Mm. God told Moses to build a sanctuary so that he can dwell mm -hmm. among them. Mm -hmm. mm. It was a symbol to them because they never, they were not privileged like us to have the Bible mm. and to read all that God had done for them. That is why he built for them something physical for them to appreciate his presence. He, he, he put up the Shekinah light to symbolize his ever-present spirit. Now, in, that, in, in those times, a sanctuary meant God is present That's with nice. them. That is why we run to him for redemption. The sanctuary also symbolized Christ himself, that when we error, we run to him. When we are in trouble, we run to him. When we have every, anything troubling us, we run to Christ. So the sanctuary was just a symbol, but God has been present with us ever since we were born, ever since we were baptized, ever since we took on this journey to when we chose him, and the sanctuary is just a symbol of God with us. Emmanuel. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, Winnie. Thank you. When I was reading about the sanctuary, actually what I found out is that a sanctuary is a place of safety, mm. a place of help, and a place of salvation. But now I pose a question to us, some of us here are leaders, others are church members, but is really church a place where you feel safe? Is it where you really feel that you can get salvation or help? It's a question you should answer on your own. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot to do to make it a safe place for others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the sanctuary, let's think of it in this way also, that it was a place where reconciliation between man and God came about. And who is helping carry out this reconciliation? Jesus Christ. Yes. And that brings, the, the, that brings in the aspect of sin. sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, going before God's presence. Will we go in God's presence sinning the way we want? Will you go before God's presence without Jesus intervening and all that? The question of sin. Sin is done that brought separation between God and man. Mm. So God brings this sanctuary to reconcile mm. between God, between him and, mm -hmm. and man. Mm. And if you look, if you study the sanctuary very quickly, I know, uh, very quickly, with the, the, the different things, the different uh, furniture that was there, they were all, the furniture was representing Jesus Christ. Jesus Am Christ. I right? Mm. So God is telling them that I'm dwelling in you, with you in all these funny chairs mm. representing my son. And I'll be there in the Shekinah glory. Do you know that this Bible is also a way that God is with us? Mm. In, his spirit dwells in this word. Yes, it's not, it's not the sanctuary, but, but his spirit dwells in there. And we go in there and we find out more about him. And the Bible has so much representation of Jesus Christ. Mm. Actually, the whole book represents Jesus Christ. So that is just God trying to reconcile with human beings and, you know, bring about protection. Mm. Yeah. So in, in other words, the sanctuary service was a representation of salvation through Jesus mm. Christ. Yes. Mm. Uh, because when we talk about deliverance, mm. I have a part to play. Which part is faithfulness mm. Mm. and acknowledging that it is only by grace mm. that I can be, be saved. saved. And the only way I can attain that grace is by connecting with my master in the sanctuary. Mm. Because he is the only one, he, he, God is personally dwelling in the sanctuary. He is the one present. And I don't necessarily have to be fully all the time at church. At church, mm -hmm. yes. But wherever I am, for as long as my heart is opened up to God, in faith, in supplication, mm. through repentance, 
and acceptance of God's grace, mm. the sanctuary is always with me. with me. We thank this wonderful God who enabled Amen. us to have the sanctuary, who is mm. always ever present mm. for us. Amen. And uh, as we come to the conclusion of our discussion today, um, uh, Winnie, what would you love our viewer out there to take from our study about God's hearing and deliverance of his people? Thank you. Personally, I'll just make an emphasis that God does not slumber like man. He's always alert. And when you call out to him, he will definitely answer because he hears. Thank you so much. Uh, Charles? Um... Like he took care of those who were sojourning from Egypt to the promised land. Likewise, he will take care of us. He will give us uh, a, a cloud by day and uh, a light by night. So even if it's dark, and however dark it is, he's our fortress. And he's the only person we can run to. Let us choose to trust the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, Martin. Um, God is more interested in saving you than you are in saving yourself. Mm -hmm. So just give, just surrender unto him. He is willing. He's more than willing to save you. He's more interested in your salvation than you are. The Lord is always listening mm -hmm. to every honest prayer. Mm. The Lord is always going to act on that honest prayer. Mm. And he has not forgotten about your requests or your supplication to him. He loves mm. you that much. Mm. What a wonderful God we have. Mm -hmm. And we thank him for having inspired the, the psalmists to sing with us this song. Mm. Does Jesus care? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, he yeah. does care. He does care. Does care. It all. Mm. Thank you so much staying tuned to Hope Channel Uganda. Um, I'm going to request each one of you to send out a regard to at most only two people. Only two people. My regards go out to all the clients <laughs> of Stagold Food because the schools are about to open. So, <laughs> my clients. And, and, and I'm also calling out to the new schools to also take on their products. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Stagold, yes. I'll not break the names but hi to my friends and my family Amen. <laughs> yeah i'll say i'll say hi to my my, my friends that watch uh, the people in the music department and the people in those studios and everything and there's one special person called brianna brianna is always <laughs> she's always watching and telling me i saw you on tv and and other lovely children that that, that keep on reminding me god bless you uh, no worries, Brianna, we shall be inviting you to come and join us here. Um, I, I, I think Salongo takes a double-double. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. Uh, my, my regards out there to uh, all the worshippers at Mabombe SDA Church, Mabombe Sabbath School. Uh, we love you so much. Thank you for supporting this mission. As well as uh, uh, people of Naluvule SDA Church. Elder Tumuhaise. Uh, thank you for supporting this mission. And uh, all those in uh, uh, West Buganda field, Elder Gibson, uh, thank you for supporting this cause. Uh, we, we love you all so much. And uh, in a special way, uh, Nalongo and the government, thank you for enabling <laughs> us to be here. Uh, uh, Mr. Abel Mwanguzi, please, uh, the, the, the blessing is all yours. So, <laughs> Regards to uh, Mrs. Olivia Mwanguzi, uh, we love you so much and uh, thank you for supporting Mr. Abel Mwanguzi as he continues to support uh, this mission. Um, uh, I'm going to request um, uh, uh, Martin to kindly lead us in a closing prayer. Let's pray. Our heavenly loving Father, we thank you so much for what you have enabled us to study, Lord Father. As we have come to the close of this uh, session, we pray that we don't leave your presence, but that we go with you through the next week. We thank you for this Sabbath day, Lord Father. Father, we pray that we acknowledge you as our protection and that these words that we've been studying may stick in our hearts and that we may trust you and depend upon you. 
Keep us through. Forgive us where we may have gone wrong. And the Lord, teach us to forgive those who sin against us. Consecrate us unto your service and unto your worship on and on and on in everything we may do as we worship tomorrow, as people go to different places of worship, be with them and let them study all these things and be blessed. We pray all this, believing and trusting that you've heard our prayer because we pray it in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 From all of us at Hope Channel Uganda, we want to wish you a very happy Sabbath as we continue sharing hope for eternity. Stay tuned. Amen.